Hey guys, I'm just another engineer, and welcome back to some more Turbo Snail Construction. Today, it's hopefully going to be a shorter episode. I know every time I say it's going to be a shorter episode, it actually isn't shorter, but we have a very simple task today. We're going to be building the control word. For those of you who don't know what a control word is, it's basically just a way of collecting all the signals that you'd be outputting to the various components of the computer. So for example, enable write on the RAM outputs the, uh, the address onto the address bus from the program counter, or the task counter, or whatever it is that I called it that's synonymous with that. So it all just comes together on one big bar that I'm going to put here in the back. And hopefully this doesn't take too long, because I know these videos are getting ridiculously long. So, what we're going to do is uh, build it right about there. So we're going to have two inputs. One of them is going to be for the, uh, the rising edge monostable, and the other one is going to be simply for the clock right there. And that's going to go into every single one of these logic gates. Um, so we're going to have, come on, right there. We're going to have a whole bunch of logic gates going down the side, along here. And these are all going to be set to OR gates. We'll see why in a minute, and I'll do all that off camera. And then we're going to have some timers right here. So what's happening here is we are going to have the step sequencer and all the stuff from the step sequencer coming into the control word. And each one of these represents a different input for each component. Now, depending on what component it is, if it's an input or an output, we're going to connect uh, this up to the clock. Um, actually, I just realized that I've done this wrong. There we go. We need another row of AND gates right there. That's going to be wired in. Then, after that, we can get our timers, and we'll put that all on top. So, we're going to take our input from the step sequencer that goes into here and just collects it as an OR gate because multiple things are probably going to be accessing it. And then, depending on what it is, so if it's, um, if it's an output, it's going to be connected up to the dark green gate because that wants to be on for as long as we can make it during the cycle. And then the uh, light green is for the input because for something like writing to RAM, it only takes a one tick input. So, that's just going to zip in there real quick and only be there for one tick. So then we procedurally wire this up to whatever we need it to be, depending on what it's connected up to. And then, so the inputs come into the OR gate, that goes into there, and then for example, let's say it's read RAM, we would no, we'd connect it up to there, so then this would take the input, that would go into the AND gate, and it'll only be on whenever the circuit is rising, then that connects up into the timer. Now the timer here, is for overclocking. So, I'll actually build a little bit of a diagram here. Alright, so here we have a bit of a diagram. We have four channels here, each one of them representing a different component, and they're all different lengths because, well, different components are going to take different times depending on what they are. Now, for this to work, we need this gate to light up, and all of these go through at their own different speeds, and then they come together into the AND gate. Now if we press the button, hold it for a while, then everything will make it to the end and light it up. But if we want to go faster, we can't, because we need to hold it down for long enough for that to light up. So I'm holding it down for maybe like 8 ticks, but it's only lighting up for 1 tick. So that's the problem there. We can run it perfectly fine slowly, but if we try and speed it up with the spud gun, then it doesn't work. So, what we need to do is we need to overclock it by adding delays. Now, what these delays are going to do is make sure that all these things synchronize. So, for something with a really short duration for processing, we'll add a really big delay, say 5 ticks for this one. So, that means that this starts a bit later, but it'll finish at the same time that this does, and then this gate will light up. Now this is a bit of a simplification, and we only have four here rather than what's probably going to be 30 over there. But now, if we hit this with the spud gun, uh, I don't think I wired that up. There we go. You can see the output flashes. 
So this means we can hit it as many times as we want much quicker. So this is what the timers are going to be for over there, just on a much more practical and larger scale. So I'm going to keep on wiring up this control word and just give us a whole bunch of slots so that whenever we make new components we can just feed them in. And then the next episode we'll probably get to actually programming this, so I guess I'll make this into a time lapse. <laughs>